Hey YouTubers, we got these uh, 243 heads washed up this morning in a covert operation to uh, get them cleaned up in the kitchen sink before anybody got out of bed. That was fairly successful. So we got them blown off, we got them dry. I was just going to show you one more time my templates that I use when I'm porting. So basically what I've done is the exhaust bowl cut on these are as big as I'll ever go on a, especially on a boosted or turbo application at 87% of the valve size. The intake valve bowl cut 90%. Oops, got a little crooked, there we go. They're all at at 90% on the intake, 87% on the exhaust. Um, I do have everything washed up. I have not oiled the guides yet. Uh, the valves have been lapped in. I don't know, I might give you a little zoom in shot here. Kind of hard to tell with the lighting, but I've got a nice tight uh, intake seal exhaust seal everything's setting where i want it to be on the valve seat um, everything's sealed up nice you know because we did just in case you guys forgot on the this set of 243 heads for some reason the uh, exhaust valves were horribly pitted and the intake valves i don't know they just seemed a little sketchy so we went ahead and replaced all the valves intake and exhaust on this set of heads um, they are not fancy valves just went with stock replacement valves for these heads so what i'm getting ready to do is lube up lube up my guides maybe just put a little bit of you know just put some uh stp on my finger and just kind of throw some on the, the seat itself and we're going to start uh, assembling these heads which of course will include checking our valve stem height, which is what determines your installed height for your valve springs. Uh, these heads, I believe, are getting the dual 660 springs on them. So uh, we'll verify 100% that we get our 1.800 installed height. Hold that thought. All right, guys, here's the first head assembled with the uh, PRC dual spring kit. I couldn't remember what brand he had purchased, but it's the uh, PRC uh, 660 dual spring kit, titanium retainers. Uh, I think it might be titanium locators too, with uh, of course the light blue you know, valve seals that comes with all those kits. Um, I'll show you a little bit more the second head. I just wanted to go ahead and get this one assembled, check the, some of the installed heights. Uh, these springs, are, I believe, are set are supposed to be set up at a one one inch eight hundred and ten thousandths. The exhaust valves were one inch eight hundred and five thousandths, and the intake was one inch eight hundred and ten thousandths. So that's you know within your plus or minus variance that's allowed on those on valve springs in general. What we do is clean out the valve guides with a brush, get them lightly lubed. Then we will lube the uh, or I'm sorry, put in the locators, then the valve seals, and start the assembly process. All right, guys, here's that second cylinder head. I wanted to kind of just run through the process I use when I'm doing the final assembly. So what I do is I start out by just using one of these little bottle brushes. I just clean out all my valve guides to make sure there's no debris, metal shavings, etc. Then what I'll do is I'll take a little bit of STP, put one drop of STP in every hole or every guide. Then I'll take and squirt it on my fingertips and lube this outer area. But don't forget you have to have your locators, which these have really nice, I think they're titanium, dual spring locators, because these things have literally no weight at all, but they fit really well to these guides. And I put a little bit of 
lube on there, of course, to help the little valve seal go on. But start out by putting your valve spring. These are actually a locator. You could call it a shim if you wanted, but this will help protect the aluminum and properly locate those dual valve springs. So basically what I use is just a dead blow and a 12 millimeter socket. Now I, I select this particular socket out of all the ones I have because it has the smoothest transitional area from your outer surface to the actual uh, hex of the socket. It's really smooth and seems to install these things without damaging them. So basically what I do is I just start it on there and then here's the here's the trick when you start putting this on keep your eye on the seal tap it move your socket watch it go down don't just start hammering away at it don't just start nailing it because you can oval this seal really easy Give it one more whack there. But just slowly get it started on there. Watch your socket. And you can hear the difference when it seats. And you can look down inside the positive seal and you can see where it pushes the top of this valve guide will hit the inside of that lip up inside of there. So let me throw these seals back on and we'll keep going. All right, guys, we've got all our positive seals and locators on. Everything's seated and good to go. There's my valves that have already been lapped and kept in order so they go back into the seat that they're lapped to. And you can see my high tech, that is a super, like, Tesla level like, organizer for valves otherwise known as a piece of two by four with some holes drilled in it. So I'm gonna share that secret with everybody. So let me get this thing put up on end so I can throw some STP on those valve uh, stems. And when, you, when I install them, I try to twist the valve to kind of distribute the STP oil treatment throughout the valve, or I'm sorry, throughout the valve guide during installation. And I make sure I've got plenty on the end of the valve as I insert it through the positive seal so I can verify I don't hurt anything. I just put a really light smearing of straight STP to protect the valve seat. And I do, you know, give it that coating all the way from the combustion chamber to where it transitions, transitions into the aluminum. That's just to kind of protect the valve seat and the valve sealing surface, just in case these heads have to sit on the shelf for a while. A little bit of a, just a freehand shot going up through the intake port before I throw the valves in it. And you won't be able to see that stuff anymore because it'll be dark. Hopefully that just gives you a little idea what that valve guide work and shaping and blending looks like. There's a little quick shot of the exhaust uh, port blending from the bowl cuts. Just kind of give you an idea what she looks like when they're done. Because like I said, once we get the valves in there, she'll be too dark to show off all her beauty okay guys so what we're gonna do is just manually lube this valve stem spinning it getting it everywhere on here and what i like to do when i'm putting it in the head i will spin it through the guide and kind of suction it back and forth so I know I'm getting that STP over the entire guide. And you'll see right here, I just carefully just kind of push it through. So I know I'm not hurting anything. Keep in mind, this valve goes to this seat because we lap these valves in to make sure they 
because I think I mentioned that we end up having to replace all the valves in these heads. No, there was no valve job required because these seats were in such good shape as long as we didn't alter the size and just stuck with the factory valves, which these are just factory replacement valves. Again, I go all the way to the seal, pull it back a couple of times to make sure that whole, the entire guide is lubed. Then I'll push it, push it through and turn it. That way I don't hurt the seal or tear it or whatever. Because sometimes if this is a real sharp edge, you can tear a positive seal if you're not careful. But as long as you're not being crazy and just slamming them in and, you know, being goofy, generally you're not going to hurt anything. Now, keep in mind I'm doing this. Generally, I don't video all this stuff because it's boring. And don't over lube your valves because all it does is end up running out into the port. So generally what I'll do is just put a little bit <clears throat> down one side of the valve. Make sure I get it all over the top. Turn it. I need to go to the next one. Boop. And I will spin it. Because no matter what, you're going to end up having lube ooze into the chamber. Or into the, not the chamber, the inside the port where the valve guide itself scrapes it off. But that's fine. That doesn't hurt anything. It'll burn right off. You don't have to worry about hurting anything. But uh, it's always better to make sure you don't have a dry guide. What they call a dry guide can actually seize a valve in the cylinder head. And we can't have that because that would be bad. That would be worse. So we're not gonna have a dry guide. We're gonna have some nicely lubricated uh, valve guides and stems. So that one was pretty tight right there. I had to be careful with it. But it went through, no, no harm, no foul. So let me get these last two put in and we'll move on to the next step. Right, guys, just to review, we thoroughly wash these cylinder heads, blow them out, cleaned out or brushed out the valve guides with a bottle brush. We have installed our uh, titanium dual spring locators. We have installed our uh, brand new positive seals and we have lubed, fully lubed and installed all of our valves that have been previously lapped into their seats so that we know they have a good solid seal. These new valves that we put in there actually lapped in perfectly. Like when you go and like, cause you can lap in old valves, old seats, and you might end up with having a good seal, but you'll have kind of a wider sealing band than what would be optimal. You know, that happens, you know, it might make a small difference. It might make no difference to the average person. But when you lap in a valve on the intake side, you want the sealing band to be roughly 50 to 60 thousandths wide. These came out perfectly in width and perfectly in the area that the valve was sealing to the seat. On the exhaust side, it came out, wide. Uh, it'll be a wider a uh, sealing band on your exhaust valve to exhaust seat because that is a heat dissipation. You know what I mean? You've got a, a larger surface to seal and dissipate heat on your exhaust side due to the higher temperatures. These came out perfect. They're right in the area that you want for good flow. I have no complaints. So let's start installing these valve springs. All right, basically what I'll do is I'll just work left to right. We're gonna put our valve compressing tool. Mine does two at a time. So what we're gonna do is, I always start them by hand. 
because the last thing I want to do is strip out one of these rocker rocker arm bolt holes right when we're starting to get somewhere. These are 13 millimeter, this is 15. So generally what I'll do is, I, and, I, and they don't have to be super tight, guys. Like I go super slow as soon as it stops. You don't have to crank them down, you don't have to torque them, none of that junk. Just get them snug. PRC uses pack springs. So basically you got the two pack dual springs. You got the titanium retainers. And then what we'll do is take this little jobber, make sure I got it the right way. So then what I do is just get this thing started. In just in case you're not uh, you know, up on how these things work. Once you start compressing this valve spring compressor, you've got a short little window where you can kind of move your springs to somewhat center your uh, valve stems in the opening of your retainers. Now these are going down straight, so that's not really that big of a deal right now. So basically this is what we're gonna do. Pull it down, grab a lock. Now, you, some people don't use grease, so don't say, this isn't like an industry standard or anything, but I like to use a little bit of red grease, tacky grease, whatever you wanna use, just to hold these locks in place. And maybe that's because I got one good hand and it just works easier for me and then you wipe off the extra, but you put them in there, push into the receiving groove, and those things won't move unless you do something to make them move. So basically I'll just put one there, turn it a little bit, grab another one. Always make sure your skinny side's down I, I, I've, I've never done it, but I've seen people fight and fight and fight trying to get their valve locks in to later find out they were trying to put them, they were trying to put them in upside down. I don't mean to laugh, but it's pretty funny. So now what we'll do is we'll just slowly release our compressor. And I know from experience, I gotta pull it up to there. So there's no interference with it later. From there, you have two PRC dual valve springs installed. And then what I'll do is I'll change my socket. I used to have two drills, so I didn't have to mess around changing sockets, but I broke one of them. So that, want to be something I can work on in the future. And I'll leave my 13 on there because what are we fixing to do? We're going to move the tool over one set of valves. I pull up on them, make sure they're up all the way. Always start them with your fingers. Don't trust your tools unless you really like tapping out a hole. And what I'll do, and again, if, I'm, if I go slow, my other drill that I used for these 13 millimeters had a brake on it that worked better than this one. So I could just click, you know, run it to where the brake clicked and I knew it was tight. But this drill, the brake uh, doesn't work very well. So I just skip that junk, make it work. Now, again, we'll get two springs. All the dust off of them, because these damn PRC springs always come with tons of, like, cardboard dust on them. Grab two more titanium retainers. Oh, let's see. Put our tool on here.
try to get them somewhat lined up, visually looking down. I'll see if this one needs adjusting. See, when it's coming down, you'll be able to see if it's fairly centered over your valve stem. And if it's not, you basically just push the spring a little bit each way until you get it centered. And then you, ha you don't have that problem. I just put just a little bit of grease on there, just enough to hold that lock. And trust me, I have knocked them loose before. That's why I got my little screwdriver over here to dig it out of there. Cause that's always a pain in the neck. I literally just put the smallest amount of grease on there. Make sure it's skinny side down. I push them together. Grab another one. But with this dual spring compressing tool, it takes no time at all to assemble a set of cylinder heads. I tried to, I don't know, I'd still kind of like to get a patent or at least a, a tool manufacturer to help me distribute this tool, but I don't know. I tried to approach some people about it and it's unbelievably cheap to produce, but nobody wanted to get back with me, so whatever. I always go slow just in case one of the locks hangs up and doesn't want to act right. Because I can always go back down, start over. But there we have another two springs installed. Tight nats getting a little wobbly. That's another thing, this drill is kind of old. Does weird things. I always think I have it out and then I don't. One thing is I have it on the high torque side of the motor so it doesn't turn as fast as I'm used to. Man, I gotta get another drill so I can have two. One for speed and one for power. But that's see before when I had my clutch working right, you could just hammer down and it would just click when it got tight. But that thing, this thing started messing up. So that was a no-go. Amazing how much box dust can get on these things. Two more tartaner retainers. goes on this way. So amazing. But if you got the right tool, two wools, it doesn't take very long to uh, put these things together. I can tell right now, I need to push a valve shut. There we go. Vibrated loose, pushed her down a hair. Now see right here, I can see this spring needs to come over just a hair. So I grab it, center it over the valve. Okay, that one needs to go in just a little bit. Now we can take and Torque these things down. Grab some locks. <laughs> 